Hi students, uh, today I want to explain to you what read-only memory is. This is abbreviated ROM. So the definition of ROM, it's, um, it's a memory device in which permanent binary information is stored. So the information is going to get burned onto this device and it's going to stay on there even after we've done a power cycle, even after um, the device has been turned on and off, this is going to stay on there. So um, the way this works is, let's just say, suppose we have five inputs to our circuit. So we'll say that k is equal to five. Um, then two to the k is two to the fifth. This is 32. So this implies that we can have zero to 31 encoded in binary. So this is a, the range of decimal numbers that we can encode in binary given that we um, have five inputs, for example. So then um, the first layer of the ROM is going to be a five to 32 bit decoder. Bit decoder. Okay, so then um, the second layer of the ROM, then suppose that the ROM needs eight outputs. So we'll let n equal eight. Then the second layer of the ROM will be um, a bank of eight equals n OR gates with possible connections to any or all of the 32 output bits from the decoder. Okay, so that's just a bunch of words. Let me put um, a picture to this so you can see what I'm talking about. So suppose our <clears throat> suppose our circuit has five inputs: one, two, three, four, five. These first go into our five to thirty-two bit decoder. So I can label these inputs, I'll call this um, input 0, input 1, input 2, input 3, input 4, and then over here on the right side I'm going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 all the way to 31. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 31. Okay, so then <clears throat> if we have our inputs over here, the outputs from our 5 to 32 bit decoder. Now we're ready for the second layer of the ROM. This is going to be this bank of OR gates with possible connections. And the way we orient this in um, the schematic is these are actually going to be um, connected down like this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And these are, it's kind of like a shorthand way of saying that all of these are going to be ORed together. Um, everything along this line here is ORed. So those are my ORs. And then the output of my ORs, these are going to be the output of my ROM. So I can label this like A0, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A seven. So these guys are my outputs and these guys are my inputs. Okay, so I have um, five inputs and I'm going to have eight outputs here and that was what was specified for this particular example. Now the size of the ROM, it doesn't depend really on this, but it more has to do with the size of this grid. Okay, so this grid here is this the second layer 
grid is a 32 by 8 grid. And um, some of these will have connections and some of them won't. And the way we determine which of these connections gets burned together, fused together, is based on some function that we're trying to implement. So for example, maybe um, these ones will have a connection. They'll have a connection here and here, but the second line will be connected here and here. There'll be um, another connection here and here, here maybe. And then um, if both of these are connected here along this A5 line, then that means that if one or both of these is high, then the output of this OR will be high and the A5 output will be high. Okay, so there's just sort of a, a general kind of introduction of how we construct the ROM. So let me show you a specific example of um, how to make one of these. So suppose, suppose we're asked to um, create a ROM that accepts a three bit number as input and outputs a binary number that's equal to the input squared. Okay, so this function that we're going to be implementing here is the square function. So let's first start by making a truth table and try to make sense um, of what they're asking us to do here. So we know we have um, three bit number as our input. So we're going to have three bits of input. I'll label those I2, I1, I0. So these are going to be my inputs. Possibilities, if I scroll through them all, 000, 001, 010, 011, 100, 101, 110, and 111. Okay, so um, what is the decimal equivalent of this number? This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? So if we wanted to take this input, this is the decimal input, but what we're actually giving our circuit is the binary equivalent, and we want to square that, then that means that this is our squared column. 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, this will be 9, 16, 25, 36, and 49. Okay, so um, these over here are our inputs, and over here this is what we want our output to be. So if this is the decimal output that we want, but our output is going to be um, a binary number, then we need to basically encode all of these into binary. So um, the way we figure out how many bits of output we're going to need in order to have enough storage containers to reach 49 is um, we can do this. So say to figure out how many output bits we need. Um, we can do 2 to the n needs to be greater than or equal to 49. And um, if I want to solve for n, I'm going to basically take the log of both sides. So log 2 to the n, log 49. So then this guy's going to come out here, and I have n log of 2 needs to be greater than or equal to the log of 49. Um, this means that n needs to be greater than or equal to the log of 49 over the log of 2, which is about 5.6147. Um, so we need, the number of output bits we need needs to be greater than or equal to 5.6. So how about we set n equal to 6? If we have um, 6 output bits over here, then we'll have enough of them in order to contain up to the binary equivalent of decimal 49. All right, so let's do that. Let's call this B5, B4, 
B3, B2, B1, and B0. And these are going to be my output bits. So if I want to output 0, 0, 0, that's just going to be, I want all my output bits to be 0. For 1, I want this least significant bit to be 1. For 4, 4 in decimal is 1, 0, 0, and I want all these other ones to be 0. 9 in binary is going to be 1, 0, 0, 1, so I want these guys to be 0. 16 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and that guy is a 0. 25 is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 36 in binary is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 25 is actually 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. And lastly, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, great. So these are the output, output bits that we need to, um, given any one of these inputs, these are the corresponding outputs where our function is taking our input and squaring it. Okay, so once we make this truth table, now we can put this into a, a ROM. So we're going to have three inputs over here. So we have um, I2, I1, I0 as our inputs. I0, I1, I2, those are our inputs. Um, this is going to be, um, if I have three inputs over here, and over here I need six outputs, then that means this is going to be a um, two to the third by six. So this is an eight by six. Um, I should put this out of here because this is actually, this first layer is a three, two, six decoder. But then the second level, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight. Okay, so those are all of our cases um, so that we can count from 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1. So we're going to need all of these lines here. And then for six outputs, that means we're going to have a bank of six OR gates down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, great. So let me scoot this down so you can see our truth table. So. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is a 3 to 8 bit encoder, but the size of this grid here, grid is an 8 by 6 grid. So the size of the ROM, this would be called an 8 by 6 dimension ROM. Okay, great. So then um, we have, we can let this be the output of this OR will be our B5 output. The output of this OR is B4. Here's B3. Here's B2. Here's B1. And here is B0. So we have all six of our binary outputs. And the way we're going to fuse these lines together is basically we're going to make an X where we have the lines connected and wherever we see a one over here on the output side of our truth table, we're going to connect those points in the grid. Okay, so um, this first line of my truth table, these are all zeros. So it means I have no connection between the first line and all of my, um, my B0 lines, B0 through B5 lines, my outputs. So over here, I have B0 is one. So on the second line, I'm gonna put an X there to denote that I'm fusing those two lines together and I have a connection in my circuit. Okay, great. So then the second line here, I have a connection here. B2 is high. The one, two, three, 
the fourth line, I have B3 and B0 high. So B3, B0. The fifth line, I have B4 is high, and that's it. The sixth line, I have B4, B3, and B0. B4, B3, and B0 are connected. And then um, this line here just has B5 connected and B2 connected. And then the last line has 5, 4, and 0. Okay, so we take this, um, all these ones here, and we transfer it to this connection grid. And this is where the connection of our circuit is. And here is the design of our ROM. Uh, there's some interesting things to note here. We can actually make some memory optimizations because if you notice, um, check out this B1 line. This thing here is always zero. So instead of putting this into our grid here, this doesn't need to occupy any space in our grid. We can just connect this guy directly to zero. The other thing that we can do is you see how this one's connected to every other, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Well, this um, column here is exactly the same as our input zero column. So instead of having this guy uh, occupying space in the ROM, we can connect B0 directly to input 0. So here's our memory optimization that we can make. We can do I0, I1, I2, and then if we only need to have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, um, this guy and this guy we're going to take out of the grid, so we're only going to have B5, B4, B3, and B2, and then B1 I'm going to connect directly to 0, and B0, I'm going to connect to I0. There we go. Okay, so here are all my output bits. These guys I can take outside of my grid. So that means that my ROM, the size of my ROM, is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 by 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so um, I have optimized how much space I need to implement this same function, um, which is squaring. So there's an example of um, how we would uh, design our ROM to achieve a particular function. There's other things you can do. Sometimes um, your function will be given to you in midterm form. So you might see something that's like... Um, Maybe you'll see that A0, A1, A2 is a function of our inputs. A, um, I2, I1, I0, and it's the sum of min terms um, 0, 1, 3, dot, dot, dot. Um, this guy has the same inputs, and that's going to be a sum of min terms. Um, two and four, you know, that's just an example. Okay, so you, you might see these guys in midterm form like that, and if you do, then um, you can create your truth table from there and then do the same thing, make your grid. And yeah, that's about it. Let me know if you have any questions about how to determine how many outputs you're going to need and also making the truth table and um, burning that into your ROM and writing this schematic here. Okay.